with the exception of the almost unlimited grass of its grazing lands, the biggest single factor in the existence of Wyoming is the Union Pacific Railroad. The biggest single factor in the Union Pacific's main line operations is that almost every freight and passenger train must go through a sculptured legacy of geography, known as Sherman Hill. This is the story of how the Union Pacific Railroad created the ultimate in steam locomotion to defeat this earthen legacy. The locomotive design that became known as Big Boy. Sherman Hill and the now abandoned town of Sherman, both located in Wyoming, were named after General William T. Sherman. Once the Union Pacific's right-of-way had been established in 1867, over 10,000 laborers of mainly Irish descent converged on the town of Cheyenne in what could only be described as a preview of hell by local clergymen. Most of the aspects of Sherman Hill are elemental. Its fantastic geology, its cloudy days and frequent stormy nights, and its ferocious resistance to be encroached upon by mankind made it one of the most difficult feats of engineering yet to be overcome of its day. I find it appropriate that Sherman Hill's conquest by man happened by way of our harnessing the elemental agency of steam power, and by no other means. And boy, what a monster of a steam-powered machine came its way years later. A machine to be known appropriately as Big Boy. Big Boy, that of which single-handedly and swiftly traversed Sherman Hill's elements, and grades as if they were never an issue. A job that once required the use of multiple locomotives to achieve such efficiency, now required the use of just one. As originally built, Sherman Hill peaked at 8,247 feet at what was once the world's highest altitude train station, Sherman Station. At roughly three miles beyond Sherman Station was Dale Creek Ravine. The ravine required a huge 650-foot bridge that stood 126 feet high. Completed in 1868, this trussle was in use until 1901. Sherman Hill had grades up to 1.92% as originally constructed. This required the use of helper locomotives on most all trains. But gravity was only one problem. Snow was a major issue in the early days, due to the narrow cuts made during the line's hasty construction. Often inadequate snow removal methods were available during this time, and as a result, several snow removal sheds had to be built along the main line running through Sherman Hill. In 1897, Edward Harriman purchased the insolvent Union Pacific Railroad. Harriman re-envisioned the mainline tracks over the system. For the Sherman Hill area civil engineers located an easier grade east from Laramie and built a second main line in 1901. This alignment gradually passed close to the base of the Sherman Mountains. It was about three miles east of Red Buttes, at a new station named Colores. This obtained the desired 0.8% grade, compared to the heavy 1.92% climb eastward from Red Buttes on the original route. The railroad stopped using helpers on eastbound trains. Overall elevation was reduced by some 250 feet and a 1,800-foot tunnel was also built. In the 1920s Mallet Compound Locomotives, or, if you will, an early version of what was to become a locomotive such as the Big Boy, were felt to be the solution to overcoming the issues with getting over steep grades such as those at Sherman Hill. These early mallet designs fell out of favor for several reasons. The compound arrangement required substantially more in maintenance costs. Heavy back pressure on the low pressure cylinders and smaller drive wheels severely lowered their speed. They were simply way too slow. As a result, by the end of the 1920s these early mallets could no longer be deemed as cost-viable and competing for work against ever-increasing competitors. Though compounding mallets were out of favor, the basic articulated locomotive design remained valid. In 1940 the Union Pacific was looking for better solutions for handling heavy freights over its most difficult and heavily graded routes in southern Wyoming and Utah, while these grades were not as steep as other western routes. These routes were more difficult for the Union Pacific because they required extra motive power to lift long trains over these grades. This was overly expensive and slowed operations. 
Sherman Hill was one of these grades that Union Pacific wanted to greatly improve efficiency. Union Pacific worked with the American Locomotive Company to solve this issue. Together they designed a 4884 wheel alignment that would be specifically suited to get long, heavy freights over these steep grades with no additional motive power assigned. The design Union Pacific and Alco came up with was basically a simple expansion on the 4664 Challenger design. This was the first, and only 4884 type ever built. When the 4884 was completed, this massive locomotive was the world's heaviest steam locomotive at 1.2 million pounds total weight. Although shortly after their debut, Union Pacific's 4884 was surpassed in total weight by the Chesapeake and Ohio's Allegheny's type locomotives. An Alco shop employee described this new, massive locomotive as a big boy, and the name stuck. On September 4, 1941 the first big boy was delivered to Union Pacific at Council Bluffs, Iowa. A few days later it entered service and demonstrated its might by hauling a freight train over 100 cars long. Union Pacific eventually received 25 big boys between 1941 and 1944. They easily handled the steep grades in Wyoming and Utah as they were built and expected to do, often reaching speeds up to 70 miles per hour while on parts of these runs. They were so successful that Union Pacific often assigned big boys to heavy agriculture runs originating out of California and destined to eastern and midwest destinations. These agricultural freights were extremely heavy, and because of the perishable load that they carried, they were expedited over the rails on a priority schedule. While these runs were not quite as fast as the Challenger passenger service locomotives, they were tightly scheduled as such and often transit times were within reasonable range of those of the Challenger. The big boy was born in the early days of mass-produced diesel-electric locomotives. By the time big boy was in action, many railroads had quantities of these new diesel locomotives in service. Often a quartet of these new diesel locomotives were used to head a freight. And though these quartets might have started a freight run faster than the big boy, once moving, the gigantic steam locomotive quickly outperformed its internal combustion competition by itself. Furthermore, the steep grades on the Union Pacific runs in the Wasatch Mountains and Sherman Hill were no match for the big boy. Runs that not too much earlier in history required multiple locomotives to complete such a run. Big boy was truly the pinnacle of freight steam locomotives in United States Railroad history, and overall the most capable ever designed as its performance over Sherman Hill would affirm. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed the artwork in my presentation, please help support our channel by visiting our print shop, Nickel Plate Limited at Etsy.com. The links can be found near the comments section and also on the top of my profile. Also, please subscribe to our channel if you have not, hit the like button if you enjoyed the presentation, and lastly, turn on your notifications for the channel so that you see all of our new video updates. Thank you once again.